as Mark O'Hare said after Christmas. He thought they had enough. Oof. It looked like they got more than enough. Uh, for, Wolves are now minus 155, hosting Bournemouth at plus 460. Wolves minus one at plus 120. Looks like the best free hit we're going to see this weekend across all four European leagues. The draw is at plus 285. Bournemouth not to score at plus 110. But Wolves to score twice at minus 120. Mark O'Hare, home win for me. So straight away, free hit, plus 120, minus one. I'm going to surprise you, um, actually, Flash. Um, I think this game is much trickier than the market expects it to be. Um, last week, I kind of warned of a bit of caution around Bournemouth at skinny, you know, back in Newcastle at skinny prices at Bournemouth because Bournemouth went out in January, spent a lot of money, tried to sort of remodel the front line of their attack. And I think they are looking like a very different team to the one that ended 2022. Um, so last week, Dominic Solanke was back from injury. He played in front of a playmaker, Hamid Triore uh, from Sassuolo, Jaden Anthony and Dango Latara as the two wingers, um, Philip Billing back in defensive midfield alongside Jefferson Lerma. Uh, and it worked really well against a, a good opponent in Newcastle. So they, missed, uh, they missed Gimarez though, didn't they? They did, but I, th- I think you've got to give Bournemouth praise because it wasn't just against Newcastle. They've, they've shown a couple of, well, they've shown glimmers of life now in, in the last couple of games. Um, they could easily have won that game. You know, Trippier's kind of clearance and in stoppage time. Uh, Triore created four chances. Uh, Otara created three. He's been a real live wire on the right flank, firing in shots from all angles. Uh, and I thought Bournemouth were the better team for long periods of that match. So um, there's still an issue for Bournemouth to try and sort of negate their opponent's strengths and, and shot taking. But I think going forward, they've rolled the dice a little bit in terms of what they've got going forward. And I think they can cause problems to, to teams down in that bottom half. So this is obviously a very tough game. Uh, I eulogised about Julian Lopetegui and his appointment. I'm very impressed with Wolves' his own business in January, the, the trajectory that they're taking as well. But I was interested to note that um, Wolves have conceded at least 12 shots in all seven matches under Lopetegui. They're averaging 15.5 shots against in that seven-game sequence as well. So they're not exactly watertight. Um, and I think Bournemouth, with this kind of newfound, new-look attack, with a bit more offensive purpose about them, could well you know, get on the score sheet or spring a bit of a surprise in this game. So... I just want to see a bit more from Bournemouth before I start kind of getting involved in their games. I'm just wary, but we have to start treating them a little bit differently. Similar to what we talked about with Wolves um, when Lopetegui came arrived. Uh, the market's not really kind of cottoned up or, or, or cottoned on to, to the business that Bournemouth have done. And I think going forward, they can look much more threatening. So happy to pass this up as a watching brief, but obviously we'll cheer on your selection nonetheless. Yeah, Stinch, my, my selection is Wolves minus one, plus 120, free hit. I think Wolves minus 155 might be the trap of the week. You know, they scored 17 goals in 22 games. How can they be this short price to, to oh, win oh, a Premier League no, match? No, 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 no. Them stats are misleading. Why don't you give me how many goals they've scored in the last five games? Well, they failed to score against Man United, failed to score against uh, Man City. They managed, uh, I think, just uh, one goal against Forest in the, in the Cup, one goal against West Ham. So they're not exactly been prolific. How many did they get um, against Liverpool? Uh, they scored... can't remember. Three. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. they, and, and, and also, they're at home to Bournemouth. And then the first two teams you bring me up is Man United and Man City. It's a small sample size, so that's why uh, we have it, to dig it, it no, a little bit it's, deeper. No, it's irrelevant sample size. <laughs> Just get on with it. Wolves win this game. Minimum 2-0. Uh, six of Bournemouth's last seven games have been under two and a half goals. And that's, you know, that's what the mark is suggesting here at minus 135. So the mark's suggesting that Wolves maybe win 1-0, maybe win 2-0. I, I quite like the look of that. Wolves under 1.5 goals at minus 110. I'm not a fan of their attack. I don't see a regular guaranteed goal scorer. Yes, they scored three against Liverpool. One was an own goal. One was from a centre-back. Uh, and then one was late on when, when Liverpool had thrown quite a few men forward. Um, yeah, but this is the Wolves we've known pretty much since they've been in the Premier League, that they don't score that many goals. Um, you know, Ruben Neves has got plenty of goals, but they often come from free kicks outside the box or penalties. So don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not, I, I can't trust Bournemouth to, enough to pull the trigger on anything because it, they've only had a few games with all their new signings. But as both me and Mark, uh, said last week, we were heeding caution and basically opposing them because they're on a bad run. 
And I think, you know, as Mark says, they could have easily been in Newcastle last weekend. And I, I'm hoping that we managed to put a few people off from, you know, from throwing Newcastle in a, a parlay or a multiple or something because, you know, they're third and Bournemouth are second bottom. Um, because, you know, the betting is not as easy as just back in one team that's above it, that high up in the league table against low in the league table. So, yeah, I would heed extreme caution in getting behind Wolves. OK, yes, um, they went to Southampton last week and Terrific's come away with the three points. I haven't been down to 10 men. But that, that was Southampton under a, you know, a crazy manager, shall we say, uh, taking advantage of Liverpool in poor form, taking advantage of West Ham in poor form. I still think Wolves have got plenty to prove, especially at these odds. Yeah, you've never been a fan of Wolves. Um, so, obviously, we've got to take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, I'm, I'm with Ponce de Leon at 13 points in the last seven games and looked really, really good. Went 1-0 down last week and then went to 10 men and still have the uh, the balls to come back and uh, gain all three points, even though it was against the Southampton side, who are not great. First of all, Fernando Mendoza. Hey, welcome, Fernando. Sorry you're late, but he never got a notification. I will uh, find out why YouTube never it's not a bet us thing it is basically a youtube thing so i will but you're here now anyway fernando but fernando you if you, you don't need a notification when you know the premier league is on at 10 eastern on a thursday throughout the season all right so let's not blame others you should know if you're a proper fan of this show you should know OK, it's always easy to blame others. I have that problem with uh, mankind across all spheres. OK, let's have a little look at the official picks. It's uh, Wolves minus one at plus 120. No surprise. And it's no surprise that the other two don't want to go anywhere near it, although they're both cheering me on. 